Texan Trevor Reed is back on American soil. His release brings new attention to another Texan still being held in Russia. Unfortunately, they are they're just a trade bait for Putin. He's looking for leverage and something to get for what he gives. What lawmakers tell us about the deal that got Reed out of Russia and efforts to free basketball star Brittany Griner. The plan to give migrants free bus rides out of Texas earned criticism from both liberals and conservatives. Now Governor Abbott has a new way to find funding. Why he says private donations could keep taxpayers from footing the bill for the busing. We investigate reports of educators across Texas unlawfully restraining students, what disability advocates and parents have to say, and why the majority of those complaints end unsubstantiated. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. A Texan is home after spending nearly a thousand days in a Russian prison. Former Marine Trevor Reed arrived back on American soil early Thursday morning. It happened after the U.S. and Russia conducted a high-stakes prisoner swap on Wednesday. Reed was serving a nine-year prison sentence after being accused of assaulting two Russian police officers after a night of drinking in Moscow. He was released in exchange for a convicted Russian drug dealer who was serving a 20-year sentence in a Connecticut prison. The Biden administration secured the swap that brought Reed home. These photos were taken on the tarmac in San Antonio. He was greeted by his parents, Paula and Joey Reed, who live in Granbury. Also there, Texas Congressman August Pfluger, who advocated for his release. Our Will Dupree spoke to the congressman about the moment and the work that led up to it. You posted some really extraordinary photos of meeting Trevor Reed once he landed back here in Texas. Describe what that moment was like getting to talk to him and see him in person. Well, it was an incredible moment and just a, a joyful reunion uh, for his family, for Trevor to touch down after 985 days and be on American soil. A lot of work has gone into this. This has been a bipartisan effort. I've been leading it from day one. Um, and was happy that every one of my colleagues in the House and uh, those in the Senate as well knew his name, understood his story, uh, knew that he needed to come home and, and were able to convince the White House, uh, Secretary Blinken, President Biden, um, to also know his name and his story. How much advanced knowledge did you receive about this release happening? Well, not much at all. I mean, for, for several weeks now and uh, maybe even months, um, you know, we've been keeping up with it. Very proud of what uh, the Special Envoy for Hostage Affairs does, Roger Carsons. He is a, a true patriot, a hero, um, and they have to work behind the scenes. And so that's important that they keep um, operational security and, uh, and keep it pretty tight lips. Taking a step back just a moment, how much should we read into this exchange about the status of the relationship between the United States and Russia? You know, I think it's difficult to say. We'd, we'd like to assume the best, but uh, the fact is that Putin is an aggressor. Uh, he's acting like a madman. He has invaded a sovereign country. He's killed, uh, indiscriminately killed thousands of people. Um, and I think is, uh, is committing war crimes uh, in Ukraine right now as we speak. So, you know, I, I think the, the relationship is, uh, is fraught with um, all of the errors that Putin has made. And that's, it's a very tough relationship. So I wouldn't read too much into it, but it is nice to know that we have a back channel where we were able to communicate and at least get this done and bring Trevor Reed home. Reed's release is bringing new attention to the stories of two other Americans. Paul Whalen and Brittany Griner remain detained in Russia. Griner is a WNBA all-star, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and a Texan. She was arrested in February at an airport near Moscow. Russian officials said they found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage. We asked Texas Senator John Cornyn about the next steps to get both Griner and Whalen back home. We'll continue to advocate, just as we did for Trevor, uh, for the release of these two Americans from this uh, Russian prison. Uh, but unfortunately, they are they're just a uh, trade bait for Putin. Again, he doesn't uh, do enter into these negotiations out of a sense of justice or compassion. Uh, he's looking for leverage and something to get for what he gives. What we need to do is keep uh, both the case of Ms. Greiner and, and Mr. Whalen front and center 
because uh, there's so much going on, it's easy to get distracted. We don't want them to get lost in all of the uh, chaos. And so that's part of my job and the job of other members of Congress to continue to work with, with those two individuals and their families to uh, get them released, just like we were able to do uh, with, uh, with Trevor. Cornyn told us he's been in communication with the U.S. ambassador to Russia. He's responsible for monitoring the conditions under which Whalen and Griner are being detained. There's a new development in Governor Greg Abbott's strategy to use charter buses to send migrants from Texas to Washington, D.C. Now the governor is asking for private donations to pay for the effort. Governor Abbott's office now has options online for people to donate directly to the initiative provides a free trip to migrants who volunteer to travel out of Texas. During a press conference Wednesday, the governor said private donations could cover the complete cost of the trips. Uh, the donations have come in. It, it likely is going to mean, I haven't seen what the number is, uh, but it likely will mean that it will be no cost to the state of Texas. The move to ask for private donations comes after the governor's plan received criticism from some Republicans and praise from some Democrats. State Representative Gene Wu mockingly congratulated the governor on the busing plan. On Twitter, the Houston Democrat wrote, Word will be passed from community to community that if you can just get to Texas, the governor there will pay for your transportation anywhere in the USA. To be clear, the buses from Texas are traveling specifically to Washington, D.C. We told you how White House spokesperson Jen Psaki called the governor's program, quote, nice for helping migrants get closer to family in other parts of the country. Meanwhile, some conservative critics have called the busing a gimmick and a waste of taxpayer dollars. We've been asking the governor's office how much these trips are costing taxpayers. We've yet to receive a response with specific numbers. Why the media has to be the one that uncovers it so that, the, so that the agencies that we gave directive to can actually do something. The head of the DMV in the hot seat. His response to an investigation that found criminals are getting away with millions in fake paper license plates. And later, what goes on inside classrooms for students with special needs? With cell phones everywhere and video surveillance in halls, you'd think parents would always be aware. We investigate reports of unlawful restraint across the state.